this is the multi-track view video let's open up let's go up to the view menu and open up the multi-track and we're going to also open up the zoom mixer because the zoom mixer uh, has some things in the multi-track that you want to know about okay first of all let me say that the the, the multi-track view window is a work of art just take a look at this it's so it just looks so simple and it can be deceiving at how powerful this window is it's the heart of the program and we're gonna get you familiar with it and in other videos we're gonna record in it and just we're gonna make this thing work right in front of your eyes and you're gonna be able to run this window in no time at all okay let's get started this area here is the mixer link controls and you've got one two three four five six seven eight of them and what do they do this watch here this is what why the zoom mixers uh, see that you want your EQs you want your dynamics your oxes FX's you got them right there you want your fader you got it right there you got your multi-track and you got one channel works just like the zoom mixer and uh, it's gonna chase along with the multi-track and of course the multi-track will chase along with the zoom mixer pretty easy to understand but yet very powerful up here are the track locator this is a track locator zone and what do you do you left click in it and you can go right to any track you want just another way to do it very simple pretty easy to understand over here you have your your readout of what time mode you have the program set to and what we ha we have it uh, set to time mode and how you change that is you go up to the timeline menu and you have four to choose from you can right click in this area and it will toggle in between the last two you used if I uh, I'm in measures beats bars and beats there the tempo mode and I go to simpty mode goes back to that mode pretty pretty easy to understand very simple toggle be between the both of them and here this is the readout it's at uh, 80 beats per minute 44 if you left click in there you can change it you can change what you want it to be set at very simple let's go to quarter notes and that has to do with the with the grid here we'll go over that in a little bit well actually we'll go over it right now why not because right here see these lines if I press the G key they disappear press it again they're back and what that means is snap to grid is active snap to grid is off if I press the right arrow key if you look right down here saw studio will if the snap to grid is on there'll be invisible grids in between these markers okay now let's go up here let's press the G key and snap to grid see do you see the difference it's snapping to the grid of what I have it set at which I think was the quarter notes right hit the G key again and it 
now it's just cruising down the timeline okay let's uh, you can also right click and turn it on and off and when you just left click it turns on and opens up the menu there's always a couple ways to do everything in saw studio okay let's move on over here to this is your stop you know what let's uh let's load in a, a session so we're gonna need to anyways we'll load in our I don't want to save that and just load it in a 21 track session didn't take too long and okay up here you got your play and your stop you can also use the space bar to play and stop that's the space bar you can right click to stop or start and, and stop right click start right click stop you can press the home key to go back home that's what these guys do this button here will play a selected area and this button here will play loop a selected area we'll show you that in editing this here well we might be able to show it to you now too why not this is the marked time in the multi-track and how do we mark time well I can just click right here and the cursor is right there I can press the B key on the keyboard B I just pressed it and I can go over here and press the E key beginning and end and I have a marked area and I'm in the tempo mode so that means I have nine measures two beats if I right click there in the time area well, I've got 28.5 seconds or 500 ticks selected that's the mark time if I press this loop well, it's going to go to the end and just play the marker. And stop. So press this. It's only going to play the marker. And it should stop right at the end. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Easy to understand. That's Saw Studio. Easy to understand. Once you get over the, the little hump of getting familiar with how the interface is operated. Okay. This button here is a button I like to call the zero button. In other words, it takes me back to zero. Or where the cursor was last at right there I press this button here and no I can push put it here and when I press home it goes all the way home but now watch I'm gonna press play right with the space bar now I'm gonna stop it it went right back to where it started right I can go home but if you're say you're uh, you just you're you're getting a mix you're doing a mix in a certain area well you can mark that area and have it loop 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 or you can just put the cursor where you want it press start and as you're tweaking mixing you can stop and it goes right back start again that's a convenient option I like that. now these are the locator points and you have four of them right there for quick locating I can so I put a locator here and shift left click 
I need this location right here. And shift left click. And look at that. I've just loaded in two locator points that I have quick access to. This right here opens up a menu if you left click on it and it gives you 26 more locator points than you already have up here with the four. And it's very easy to understand. If you have, oops. If you want to set that as a locator point five, what does it say? Shift click. Okay, I'm going to shift click. It opens up a dialog box. I type in drums, press enter, and I can be down there and I can go and select, select it. And it lets me know what point that's at, time wise. It's pretty easy to understand. You want to clear it? Just do what it says. Up here, control click, and it's gone. Let's move over to this section here, MT load and source load. In a nutshell, if these numbers are high, it might be time to make a, a more powerful rig. <laughs> That's my opinion. But uh, the MT load is your CPU and the source load is how fast your hard drive is feeding the system. How fast is your system feeding Saw Studio? You don't want these numbers to be high. That's all I can tell you. Easy to understand. Okay, here we have our select button. You can use your S key on the keyboard. S turns it on and you'll see the mouse turns into a select look. You can also click on it, left click, turns it on and off. And you can click and drag and select. You can click once, one at a time. You right click and they all disappear. You're noticing that as we go through the, the videos, a lot of the same operations in every window do a lot of things. If you want to select here, well, you go with the selector button. You left click, you select. What happens when you're over here? You left click and you select. You want to erase, right click. You want to erase, right click. You see, a lot of the same stuff is... It, it's been programmed to make it easy and it flows through each view. It just flows right through. That's the select. And we'll get into a little more how to use that when we're doing our editing and, and mixing our song and, and stuff. That's going to be fun.